you know, for years, when I, since I started my energy study and exploration, and I studied and I studied and I thought and I thought and I read and I read, and I came up with a factor that I thought was a key factor that explained, you know, the problem that we're in, because when you get the key factors, then you've got your hand on something that you can really move things fundamentally. Okay, cheap gasoline, cheap oil, and how cheap it really is, the U.S. minimum wage price of human power gasoline equivalent would be 500 bucks a gallon. And the fact that it's so cheap that we have these energy slaves, it skews our whole economy in a way that we don't appreciate, um, mostly unless you have done a lot of reading about history and the history of technology. But there's, uh, just a few years ago, I found another factor that uh, a friend of mine who was an activist introduced me to, called it the dominator culture. And the dominator culture is the hierarchical, authoritarian, command and control, centralized culture that we are all infected with to some degree or other. And Maybe it started with the patriarchy, who knows? Um, I'm not gonna blame it on men. As far as I'm concerned, that's an accident of history. What we need to focus on is getting rid of that cultural virus, that dominator attitude that we're affected with, that, that makes us think, well, I'm better than you, or those kids when I was in school think, oh, I'm better than that cootie Muriel cigar and all that bullshit. Um, because we're not. Every soul is equal. Yeah, we're different, but, you know, every, everybody's pain hurts just as much to them, and everybody's pleasure isn't just as enjoyable to them. So, you know, And so when I look around me and I see these problems that we have, and I see the cheap gasoline and the dominator culture, and I see, you know, if we could solve those, those problems, every problem I see could be healed. One thing that um, for us to succeed in following the path to to get the sustainable future. We have to look behind the money. If, if we think that uh, following the current money rules is going to work, it won't. Because the whole relationship between money and energy is changing and it's going to start changing faster. So don't just look at your income in, t in money terms. you got to look at your income in terms of your real needs the clean air and water, the healthy food, and the shelter from the elements. That's the real income. Don't get fooled by the money. Okay. Actually, wait, I got one last question. Okay. Uh, some people refer to you as the chicken lady because of the <laughs> debate. How do you feel about that? Um, hey, uh, they're remembering it. They're remembering not just me, but they're remembering the chickens. And that's because I was reading um, a Cali Pieri report. No, actually, it came from the Energy Commission relating to this greenhouse gas process. Man, it was full of the most foggy, bureaucratic language you could imagine. There wasn't a single concrete detail in it. Chickens are concrete. And we need, like, really concrete ideas um, because without it, people don't have as nearly as good of a gut level feeling for, you know, where I think we should go and where we can go, where they think we can go. It's not about what I think, it's about what everybody thinks. Amazing Earth, how sweet the air, her children breathe 
each day. Bless be. Oh shoot, now I'm forgetting the words. <laughs>